Good morning. August the 27th. <laughs> I'm out here picking uh, some figs for breakfast. And I just started to marvel over the size. Look at the sheer size of this Peter's honey. And here's another very large. If I could get it in through the net here. I'm going to pick this one too without smashing the other. Oh, let's take a look. Wow, look at the size of these figs. I did smash that one a little. Debbie so enjoys these, and so do I. These are certainly an apex fig. And I'm fortunate <clears throat> because in every location that I grow my in-ground trees, I keep, I keep them high and dry, and so they're not inclined to split. Kadota, which is a close, uh, I would say it's, 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 it's similar to Peter's honey, but Peter's honey has a more exquisite flavor, and it's definitely a different fig. Uh, Kadota is more inclined to split in these northeast regions where it's humid and uh, rainy. And uh, Peter's honey has an edge over Kadota in that regard, and in flavor. And in Breba, and in size, and believe it or not, it is much more prolific, even than Kadota. And Kadota is one of the most successful commercial figs on the planet Earth. But I, I, I far, I, I've grown Kadota in two locations in two zones, and I, I've abandoned ship. Um, I, I far prefer, uh, prefer the uh, Peter's honey. So I, I just wanted to talk to you briefly because I'm a little sad today. <laughs> I I put a video on a day or two ago um, with regards to the non-berry type figs, the LSU figs, for example, and others like Italian honey and also Peter's honey. And Holy A and so many others that we talked about. We talked about, this is just a beautiful tree, isn't it? This LSU tiger. We talked about the tiger I, in that video. I, it's just so many figs on this tree. And uh, they're all non-berry type. Some of them might be regarded as uh, honey berry or whatever, the designation that we humans give to these wonderful, wonderful fruit trees, but uh, yesterday, yesterday, uh, I had my son here, Marius, and uh, we were having breakfast with our son and enjoying it and talking and carrying on, and he says, Dad, uh, come on outside. So I went outside with him, and we, he took me behind the, the sheds where I have a, another fig garden with some different varieties, and among them is the holly egg, that's how I pronounce it, uh, a, a white fig. Uh, some would classify as a honey fig. Um, and he said, come here. And he had gobbled up like several of the, <laughs> the, the holly egg that I had been ripening, and I, I've eaten a couple, and they're so good. Uh, so I guess I want you, I want you to say that this video is dedicated to Holy A because I, I I so want to recommend it. Hey there, spider. What are you doing? You may go in peace. Um, I, I so wanted to recommend that variety because I just love the exquisite taste, unique taste. I recommend it strongly. I've grown it for quite a few years. And it is a non-berry fig, but let me tell you, it is a wonderful tasting fig. And I like it. Well, anyway, back to the bad news. So there was a few more ripe ones, so I gobbled them up and shared them with Marius. I love sharing. <laughs> and uh, I put the net back over the top because I so valued those figs, I didn't want any birds to get to them. And I had some beautiful ones that would be ripe 
perfectly ripe today. And remember, I've always said, pick the figs when they are perfectly ripe. Not when they are partially ripe. Not when they, they need another day. Or, I, I hear that so often, and I've done it too. We're all guilty. But pick them when they are ripe. Like this, like these Peter's honey. I should go get Debbie. I'm, I'm going to give these to Debbie, but maybe I could just... I've done this before. I did it in my last video, but I'm smashing this, this fig. So let me open it up again to show you its glistening beauty. It's absolute glistening beauty. I hope you can see that the way I do. <laughs> this is a a master fig. I, I, it, I love this fig. And again, because I plant high and dry, which I have advocated time and time and time again, I don't get any splitting, or very rarely. If it rains a lot, I will, of course, every fig. But you can see, these are these are just beautiful figs. And we had many, many more inches of rain this summer than I would have liked. I mentioned in the past video, I had uh, eight videos and, I mean, eight, eight inches of rain, and I think it was an eight or ten day period about a month ago. It was, it was terrible. But I'm, I'm okay. I'm high and dry. And I keep these ugly things here to usher the water away from my home where it's up on a hill and to keep my figs high and dry. Okay. So I eagerly went out to my Holy A this morning and I should just, I think I will. Well, anyway, a raccoon or something, the one that has been marauding my greenhouse, it just tore my tree up broke it up, broke a big branch off of it to the ground and ate my holy a figs. <laughs> oh boy, I, I certainly wish that raccoon preferred only the berry figs because I had other berries. He got them too. He got them too, but he didn't uh, leave not one ripe holy a for me. But notwithstanding that disaster that I've just described, uh, uh, please allow me to get this darn uh, recommend that variety because it's certainly a really 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 good one now I'll bring you back and I'll show you what I'm talking about here many 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 hardy Chicago types ripe a great deal a great many of them so I thought I'd stop on the way to the Holy A. Ah, look at this one. This one. Ooh, look. That is a real beauty. Perfectly ripe. There we go. Mmm. Perfection. Very good. Very, very good. And another. Another perfectly ripe. Well, let me get back to the Wow, look at that one. Woo! A couple of ants on that, not many. Look at that. Dripping honey. We'll tear it open. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. So good. Here we go. And now I return to the scene of the crime. This raccoon is breaking my branches and stomping them down and climbing up in my tree and eating, eating my figs like crazy and getting a lot of them and doing a lot of damage. As you can see, he just comes and eats most of the fig and leaves some of it on there. I had red Lebanese, which is a tasty variant of the uh, Mount Etna types. And right here, and he ate all of them up. He ate them all. I had them all going all the way up and down the branches. He ate every single one. And then he came over to my Holy A and he broke my branch, my tree, just 
Let me try and get my, oh here, look what he did. Busted it up down there. He just jumped on it and then he started eating the figs. And he, this thing will, will eat, take big bites out of the fig and then just move on to the next fig and break it off or eat it all whole and then eat a, leave a bite. And all of my holia that were on these, look at them. You can see where they were between near the nodes, between the node and got them all. All the ones that were ripening beautifully yesterday that I left and here, he took them all. He, he's, you know, he, he resorted to, I, I put a net on the top, so he, he, he doesn't prefer to fight conventionally. It's not a conventional warfare. He prefers guerrilla warfare. He goes under the net and climbs the tree and breaks everything up. <laughs> he would think that maybe he would get caught in the net, you know, and be discouraged. But he's not. Here you can see the remnant of another fig that he, I don't know if you can even see it, that he devoured and left a remnant. I see figs on the ground where he's left pieces on the ground. So I have a trap, and I'll show you a have a heart trap. And uh, let me show you that. I have a trap set for him a couple nights, but he's a smart devil. And he's outsmarted me. And he, I've baited it with figs of different varieties. And I have it set here so I could catch him without doing any harm to the beast. And then, of course, I'll usher him away to a newfound home where he will no longer be a menace and do harm to my fig orchard. So, with that, I thought you might enjoy that story a little bit. That's what I'm having to deal with. You know, I, I share my figs, of course, and I, even with the birds, I've mentioned many times, and I don't mind. But my holy A, come on, that hurt. My right poly A, because I wait for them. And between my wonderful son, who gobbled up a handful yesterday, and this marauding bandit, which I believe, but have no empirical concrete evidence that it is a raccoon, I am left with <laughs> just a few that I was fortunate enough to gobble down a few days ago, the first ripe holier. It's a great, it's a great fig. Another non-berry type fig that is probably underestimated and undervalued. Uh, I find that it is winter hardy in my 7A zone. I'm going to move a air layer or some cuttings, make some new little baby holia, and I'm going to move this variety to my other location uh, for sure. I'm singling it out. I highly value it. Not as much as my Peter's honey, but it's different than my Peter's honey, very different, and it has a a lovely, delicious, exquisite taste. I like it when it's grown properly and has the proper nutrition and the right pH, which is near neutral. This little rascal, I'm going to catch him. I'm making a promise to my subscribers out there and viewers. I'm going to catch this rascal and I'm going to move him to a, a very nice new home where there's a creek you know, running stream and plenty of food. But he has to be removed from here. I've never had one cause so much damage. And I've never had one actually uh, possess the audacity to raid my my greenhouse, even though it's all open. And I guess it's a forgivable, a forgivable uh, attack, really. I mean, it's just an animal that's looking for something to eat. <laughs> but... Uh, it's private, you know. I, 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 I like I said, I, I like to share, but I have my limitations. <laughs> okay. Thanks for that visit. Always enjoyed.
There, look at that. He got to this one too. He's a rascal, he is. Good day.